Look, check this out. What? It's good. That, that. Is that one of your new characters? Yeah, it's um, he's called Nozzle. Nozzle. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm already. That's the horrible thing about you. You'll do something crap, and I'll go, "Oh yeah." And then you say his name Nozzle, and then I go, "Right now, I'm interested. Now I want to know <laughs> more about Nozzle." He, uh, he goes around going like this. <laughs> right. What are we doing this week? We're going to be talking about something. Yeah. That I have a. <sighs> I started a sentence there, and I knew you were going to corrupt it, so I've cut it short. That's what you. That's what she said. If she was a I was going to say or hated penises. I'm going to talk about something that I have a long association with. There you go. You see, just all raise right. your eyebrows. You don't need to say anything beyond that. My hair's all over the place because I just had the stupid penis mask on. And it's in my eyes. Wait, what do you mean penis mask? I thought penis was the... no. I mean the. Uh, I was cosplaying as penis. Oh right. Wasn't it a for, real penis? Just Comic-Con. the one who helped him out at Christmas during a busy yes. period. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. As beans. Back in 2007, some yeah. viewers may recall, uh, I did a BBC Three pilot called Biffo Vision. Ten points to Hufflepuff. <laughs> It was a spoof of Saturday morning kids' TV shows. And in that, there was a a puppet sidekick, as those shows tended to have, called BW. Get with it, BW. Now, BW um, was uh, based upon a a toy that I had growing up. Oh, so you actually had one of these then? I did as a kid, yeah. Um, Now, the one that we, we had for Biffo Vision... Uh, we we bought one off of eBay. I think Tim Moore, who I co-wrote Biffo Vision with, no relation to the recent YouTube name change, by the way. Well, there, there is re- relation, but uh, for obvious reasons. Stay focused. Come on, Don't, we're nearly there. That's not what I do best. <laughs> no, I've realised that. Oh, how long is this video? 57 minutes. All right, I'll get comfy. As I was saying, so Tim bought one off of eBay, but the... Uh, the producers of, of Biffo Vision said, we can't use that because we'll get sued by Kenner, who made the original toy. Oh. So they spent an enormous chunk of our minuscule budget recreating a very subtly different version of the puppet because I was like, it has to look like this this toy because mm. the toy is quite brilliantly sort of horrific and probably the most harrowing child's toy of all time. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And they came back with this thing that cost something like six grand that they got some prop maker to make. Are you joking and, me? No. And it looks like Six grand for that? Wow, that yeah. is You crazy. watch the show and you just go, that's that's just the toy. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> the toy was um, Hugo, man of a thousand faces. Now, this is the weird thing. So when you showed me this prior to us making this video... I'd never seen it before, and it didn't ring a bell, but then when you mentioned it about Biffo Vision, I was like, oh, that's where I've seen that, in the, you know, the back of my mind. Yeah. But as a toy growing up, I was never aware of that. Well, it was released in 1975 by Kenner. I don't know who released it over here, because <clears throat> Kenner, when they released their Star Wars figures in the UK, it was all mm. through Palatoy. So I don't know who did the, the UK version. Apologies for that. I'll have to try and find that out. That sounds but, to me like it could be Peter Pan Toys or it could be GT Action or whatever they were called. Yeah, so something they quite were possibly. Called. Maybe. Anyway, so I've got myself a new one off of... Uh, off the of The internet. Off of the eBay. Off of the old eBay. And I thought we'd take a look at it. I've just put my hand in it for the first time. That's what she I'm said. And I'm realising that might have been a mistake because it feels quite grimy inside. Oh, you got your hand up, grimy. <laughs> Hugo's back passage. Uh. That's not nice. I'm regretting doing that now. You should have given there's that a also, wipe down. Oh, there's also some unspecified hair as well on there. Some sort of threads. Uh. Is that a cobweb? It might be a cobweb. Let's hope it's a cobweb. Oh, there is. There was a blooming spider's egg. Look, that's a, a spider's egg. Is it? Yeah. That, no, oh. keep that, because that's... <laughs> I don't like spiders. Don't like them. There's this probably spiders a... in there, and I've had my hand in there, Paul. This is going to be a really short video now, because you're not going to be able well, to touch I'll that. hold it. I don't like it. Can you prop it up on the... And my hair's in my face. It's driving me mad. Ugh. 
That's better. Right. Right. Are you going to have I'm a all hara- I'm all breakdown? harassed now. I yes, just want to know if we're, if we're medically allowed to carry on with this episode. I'm all right. I'll get, I'll get a grip in a minute, but I am a little bit stressed now. All right. So let's talk about the thing off camera then for the time being. We had a little glimpse of it. You might have even have dropped an image in from your TV pilot. You might have dropped an image Belly. of that in. So we're aware yes, of I'd what have done it looks that. like. Thank you, backseat driver. Thank you. But what I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying, just to get to it, so you stop having a hissy fit every time you touch its dirty cobwebby fabric. I've got to look up its bottom. Do you know what would be great? If in the middle of the night, all the eggs hatch in that thing, but the mount of spiders that come out carry it up the stairs Why would with you it, say that? Why would then, you like, say that? And then, like, drags the doll into the middle of the room, and then the spiders all just lift it up and raises one hand and says, you're coming with me. Why would you say that? Oh, and then the mouth doll opens, and all the spiders claw out of the it mouth. It doesn't open. The, the mouth doesn't open. Look, it's... I know. It's, anyway, look, I'll hold him from the sides and not put my hand in there. So, oh, you should see him up there. Yeah. He's he's creepy. He's got weird, pale, blue-grey eyes. I'm um, sure it's not the first time, now, but it's very Yul Brynner-y. Yeah. That's, that, well, that's exactly what I used to think it was what was when I was a kid. It was based on Yul Brynner. Now, what do you think you did with Hugo, the man of a thousand faces? What do you think his deal was as a toy? I mean, I I know, so I'll let you to tell everyone. Oh. I did you research, said you even... mate. Why'd you do research? I was going to tell you about it. Well, funnily enough... It was one of those, you know, Biden... What's that thing? Biden... Joe what's, Biden? No, not Joe what's Biden. What's he got to do with it? Do you know there's, there's a thing where once someone mentions something once, all of a sudden it turns up everywhere? Right. The, the so what? B- Biden something... Biden Powell? No. no, it's not... Forget it. <laughs> just forget it. The Baden Powell factor. It was just that that toy, at the same time you brought it to my attention on Twitter or whatever, also right. came up in a timeline for some retro nostalgia toy thing. And then you kept seeing thing. pictures of Joe Biden and Baden Powell. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly how it happened from that point on. Right. So, Hugo, the man of a thousand faces, was a prosthetic makeup doll for boys. Obviously, it wasn't just for boys, but that was how it was marketed at the time. Uh, And I'm not going to hold that up because I'm just going to drop in some pictures. But Hugo came with assorted prosthetic pieces and some spirit gum, which, Mm. if you might know, is used in the theatre to attach hair <laughs> and things to actors' faces. Yes. Like you might, when going out of an evening, attach a big bushy moustache, a handlebar moustache to oh, yourself. Yeah. yeah, You'd yeah. look good with one of those. I wouldn't. I've done it. I look like a sex criminal from the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> well, in certain circles, that might be a bonus. It's not really. <laughs> <laughs> right. <clears throat> so the whole point was it didn't come in this bag that probably got spiders in it let's face it this Ziploc bag this Ziploc bag it's a Ziploc bag that they've stapled shut it's Ziploc you don't need to staple it anyway did you buy Sorry, it from America? This... no I don't think so why? I'm just wondering because it, it just seems like they got it in out of the garage put what was left in a Ziploc nailed it shut because the Ziploc was broke and then put the that rest looks... in with a spider that does look disturbingly like a bag of evidence, doesn't it? Also, yeah, it does. It looks like a serial killer's toolkit. Well, it's not. It's like hair and flesh. Yeah, but if, if you're disguising yourself. Or, or a cat burglar's <laughs> toolkit. <laughs> yes. Anyway, yeah. so I'll get some of the bits out that you can stick to Hugo's face. So the obvious one was, um, was well, this is the, the wig. So Hugo nice. could have, have hair. Unfortunately, they, were, they only provided one one type of hair. So he, he had two options when it came to the top of his head, which was bald and that wig. So bald or 70s or like Beetle, Bad Beatles haircut. <laughs> yeah, it's it's Bad Beatles-esque. Weird. Also came with some creepy uh, glasses, like a kind of, uh, what would you call that? He either looks like a beatnik now. Or, yeah. Um, or... Uh, well, uh, yeah, a beetle or a beat nick or yeah. some other things. A beater, which is a, a beater. Isn't that a, some sport thing, isn't it? A beater. I don't know. Not with those hand <laughs> gestures. <laughs> it is. What's the sport? Leave a comment below that has beaters. Fluffing. Don't. Fluffing. That's what you're no, thinking of. No, that's not, that's not a sport either. It is, so it is for um... me, mate. It is for me. 
Check this out. Look. Yeah. Look how scary he is there. He looks like the yeah. um the claw. What's the no? What's the name of the b- bad guy from Thunderbirds? The Hood. The Hood. Yeah. yeah, he does actually there. So you can stick that on. I mean the the one of the he had some teeth that so you could kind of oh, uh, make it a monster. Well, apparently the, they wanted to call it the toy Lon Lon or something or Yeah, Chaney after or Lon Chaney. The man of a thousand was, faces. Lon Chaney was known as the man of a thousand faces. Um this the oh my god, I'm realising how dirty this is. It's you didn't filthy, think to Paul. wash it before we did the video. Well or I thought it would be good it to get before you got it. I, I wanted there to be you know, to not have to feign surprise and kind of go, Oh wow, what I didn't that's expect what, was that's what other to YouTubers be filthy. do. YouTube is nothing but insincere reactions to things. Well, I'm not very good at those. You should be. No. I bet you. Yeah. Well, they good for them that they go and wash all the things they're looking at before they they put them on camera. No, I well, did. It's probably good. Otherwise, they end up with a bag full of spiders. <sighs> right. This is this is. It's <laughs> got a chin, right? But this look at the chin. It looks always used to look like a bum to me. Or something similar. Can you see it? I can now, oh. yeah. It's a big, a bit clefty arse chin. It is, isn't it? A bit Bruce Campbell-y. But one of the other things you could do with Hugo's stuff was, was put it on yourself. And could you? I'm not... It, it, it's in the instruction manual. Look. Oh, cool. There's a picture of a boy. Because spirit gum is, is for skin. Yeah. Um, and it came with, Always I believe... The, the American version, I It'll think, came with a bit. kind of... What are you muttering about? It froze for a second then. Just oh. after you showed me the paper in the air, you were shaking it, and then it all froze. Well, yeah. that's fine. We'll put that in it. We'll make a virtue of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the American version came with some sort of glue stick, but I'm pretty sure that the British version that I had was like a bottle of, of spirit gum because I remember it going It was, everywhere. but it never lasted that long. And it, after a few years, it would, all, it would lose its tackiness. How do you know all this? Don't... Research. I was meant to be telling you. I know, but I've got nothing to say otherwise, so I thought I'd throw some facts in. Right, no, you throw your facts in. All Off right. you go. It was used by the Gestapo to confuse... No, it uh, wasn't. It was, conf- it was used by the CIA to assassinate JFK, who was MIA, and it was an SOS. None of this is working. Oh, the glasses is good. <laughs> so it's an interesting toy, though, isn't it? Because it kind now, of has two elements of... It has... The discovery of makeup and, you know, faces and masks and eyes and hair and all that stuff. What disappointed me, here's, here's the actual list, by the way, of what you've got in there. You've got two noses. Right. Uh, four eyebrows, so two sets. Uh, a selection of warts. That's, yeah, yeah, I know. The picture's pretty gross. Um, a goatee stroke hair piece, which I didn't touch, but here it is. Yeah. Um. So you, I suppose you could put a tuft on there. Um, various scars, which had like kind of oh, nice, on. cool. A bandage for the head, which I imagine has rotted, given that this is from 1975. Yeah. Um, two chins. I think I've only got one chin here. Uh, there's the all stuff one. in the bottom of the bag. There's all like mud in it. Anyway, um, an eye I patch. feel dirty just watching this video. My fingers, I can feel the filth on me. We'll soldier on. Uh, Hugo, uh, a man of a thousand germs. There's the various eyes that you can put over his eyes. Do you remember that film Arachnophobia? And it begins with like a package coming over from another country with a spider yes. in. And then it hatches. And then adventure and horror happen. Do you know what? I can taste dust in my mouth. I genuinely can. It's all like come out of the bag. It's well, probably all Hugo's... The yes, it's probably spider the spider eggs. egg, Paul. Or the spores. Yeah, the... Sp- Spider eggs and spores. They're going to be in so, your teeth. Um, and spiders yes, will hatch from okay, your mouth. <laughs> don't, I don't like that, that sort of thing. I don't like it. Oh. One thing that disappointed me with the toy. Yeah. Which was intended to be a sort of puppet. I'm not putting my hand in there again. No, fair I'm never enough. doing that again. Uh, was that I, I hope, because in the instructions, it said you could send off additional glue sticks or, or in this country, additional mm. bottles of glue. I always wanted them to release packs of other makeup. It was very limited what you could do with it. It bothered me that. Do you think that was because the toy wasn't massively successful, so there wasn't much call for extra sets to come out for it? 
Well, I've read, I haven't got sales figures, but I've read that it was quite popular. Oh, okay. I mean, you bear in mind that um, I think at the time, 1976, there was a guy called uh, Uncle Floyd in America, an entertainer who had a a show called The Uncle Floyd Show, Mm. and he featured Hugo on it. Oh, really? Um, And apparently Pee Wee Herman in his early stand-up routines did a whole bit with Hugo. I bet Um, it was naughty. I bet it was naughty because he was quite adult, wasn't he? I think. He originally, the character of Pee Wee was a subversion of all that kind of Saturday morning kids show type stuff, uh, like Mister Rogers and all those kind of things. But like, turned up to eleven. But his show was very, it, it, in many respects, was almost like outsider art. So it was kind of along with that uh, weird, like Keith Haring type stuff. It was all kind of part of that emerging eighties weird uh, outsider art thing. Keith Haring, the artist that you yeah. mentioned, Winky. See, I'm not saying I've they're watched similar. It now. I've watched it. I've I know. watched it. Or listened to it, rather. Yeah. I'm very yeah. impressed. Thank you for yeah. endorsing it online. You're very welcome. Um, but anyway, when I was researching all this, because I mm. thought I don't know anything about it. It was a it, it, it was, you know, I know I knew it came from Kenner originally. Yeah. I knew it was released in the mid 70s, which is when I had mine. Mm. What I didn't know is who um who invented it for Kenner. Uh, which was a guy called Alan Ormsby. No relation to Orm out of Orm and Cheap. I, who... I was about to ask that, funnily enough. I'm glad you set the record straight. <laughs> I beat you to it. Yeah. Now, Alan, when I messaged you about this and about him, you seemed to know who he was. Yeah, he, he was. He did a film called uh, he did it was a like lot Children films. Shouldn't Play or something like that. It that's like, it. Children yeah. Shouldn't Play with the Dead yeah, or something like that. Um, Children Shouldn't Play with the Dead, which he, because that's, because he started out doing very low budget kind of zombie and horror films. Yeah. Like he did, um, I think his first one was, uh, oh God, where was it? Um, I, I can't find it. I've written Billy Bear Ham here. That's that's coming up in a future episode. Good, I'm now looking forward to Billy Bear Ham. <laughs> the Billy Bear Ham episode. No he good. doesn't want that. But he well, did a film based on the serial killer, Ed Gein. Or Gein, how's it pronounced? You know that. It's, I think it's Ed Gein. Gene. There yeah. you go. Um, which was called uh, Necro... Oh, no, Deranged, Confessions That's of a Necrophile. Right. Yeah. Um, which caused Ed Gein, who was the basis for Psycho and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm. So somehow he transitioned from doing these low-budget horror films. He wrote a book called Movie Monsters, Monsters, Monster Makeup and Monster Shows to put on, which we might look at in a future episode. Oh, good. And I'd then... Like yeah, and then somehow, because I've got a copy on order, then somehow he ended up making a toy for Kenner. Weird, because then that was the weird thing about toys in that era is because the technology had changed and like plastics were, you know, more adaptable to crazy ideas. It's why you saw yeah. through the 70s and 80s a lot of really elaborate toys being made. Um, that's a prime example of one. You look at like, for instance, yeah. it's not too different from like the, the, the get girl's toy of the bust of the lady's head and you can give her a haircut and do makeup. I think that's what this was. I mm. think this was the, the boys version of Girls World. Yeah. If you remember Girls World, which is I've, what... I, might, I think my sister had something similar, if not that thing. Yeah, that's what my sister said. Mm. How old is your sister? Is she younger than you? Well, she's you younger, but I remember she did have a plastic doll head with a mirror and a little makeup kit thing. So. Yeah, my sister's had the uh, one where you turned a dial at the back and the ha- its hair grew. But it only grew so far, so eventually they were had really short. Yeah, because they kept cutting it, you see. That was the whole point. Yeah. I think... But like, oh, I think well, there's a whole... There's a, there's a, Oh, I, mean, I keep raving about this book, but there's a book about board games and things. And one chapter's about this guy called, oh shit, I knew I'd forget, but his surname is Glass. And it's got a very long story short. He was like the Willy Wonka of toys. For instance, what? all the kind of fake dog I know him. I looked up. him up the other day. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. Yes, funnily enough, I I was reading his Wikipedia page last yeah. week. He's a, um, it's a, he's a fascinating man. And it's very we'll do, Willy wonka We'll do an ep on him. Yeah, we should. Because again, without him we wouldn't have half the novelty toys we know and love and board games no. and things like that. Even Mousetrap, I think, was yeah, hot. Or him. something to do. I don't know. Either way, we'll, we'll do it in detail later. We'll do it in detail. Much like we've done Hugo in detail this yeah. episode. We would have done it in more detail, but it's full of spiders. Disgusting. It's a very good excuse not to do something, if your excuse is, but it's full of spiders. I'd be like, yeah, that's fine. Leave it. Yeah. Well, but, mm. So the toy sold well initially, but then just... Well, I don't know. I mean, it, everything I've read about it, it says 
it was a, the popular toy from the 1970s, the popular boys' doll. Yeah. Um, so I'm assuming it must have done. Uh, but beyond that, I mean, whether Alan Ormsby, because Alan Ormsby was a screenwriter as well as a low budget makeup artist and director, because he mm. um, co wrote Porky's 2. That's which, right. Of all things, which is the most random thing that the guy who co wrote Porky's 2. Also designed Hugo. Yeah, he literally had a hand in Hugo. Hey, whereas I never will again. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> Not without eight gloves on first or something and bleach it. So we're going to so, see that um, pop up in future episodes of Digitizer now as a well. You might character. once it's had a yeah once yeah. it's had a wash. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. Yeah. Cool. So uh, I mean, this episode will have various bits dropped into it, such as commercials. And the like that I shall steal off the internet and fair enough. Things there's a great um, advert they did that was a or yeah comic book advert that was done in the style of comic strips. Mm. That's um, of a boy scaring some monsters with Hugo because Hugo was that scary. We should pitch a TV series where we take six very unusual toys most people haven't heard on. We do a deep dive. We could do this. We could do Winky. We could do I don't know something else. The little camera projector toys or something <laughs> yeah we can do them in less detail on this channel I just want money <laughs> I want money for things I do <laughs> that's fair enough well there we go that was Hugo ladies and gentlemen I enjoyed that I really did because I like that kind of toy history stuff yeah well we'll be doing much more I hope um, on here going forwards because yeah i i i like doing my research mm. not that i did a lot no but it was enough to get people interested maybe they'll well, investigate and look for here's a little themselves. thing alan ormsby i have messaged him and his wife on facebook to see if they'll do it or he'll do an interview with us do um, it well i've Zoom done it. it i have already, yeah i will i've already done it but um alan ormsby doesn't seem to do a lot on facebook his wife's quite active but um We'll see. If we'll she see gets because back I, that, that's how I got that French chap for the Winky episode. He just happened yeah. to be on Facebook, and I found him and asked him a message. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Look so at that. We you have. Ask, we, you don't get. We have the same journalistic technique. Yeah, laziness. <laughs> <Just pester people laughs> find someone on Facebook, send him a message. That'll do. Pester yeah. their, them and their loved ones until begrudgingly they join <laughs> the fray. Pester them, stalk them. Yeah. Well, uh, Hugo's saying bye bye now. Bye bye, Hugo. Just say nest thing. Bye bye everybody. Bye bye Not Hugo. Hugo, oh, Hugo says, "Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and also share the video around a bit if you can." Because because oh, if you don't, help. Hugo will leave spiders in your mouth and eyes. Yeah, yeah. I've put my hand up a, a spider and spore filled puppet for this episode. Share it for Christ's sake. <laughs> bye everyone. Bye. <laughs>